In this video, I'll introduce you to the numerous event topics in vRealize Automation. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavor. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Welcome back everyone. We're going to continue our exploration of event subscriptions in VRise Automation 8. And in this video, we're going to explore the super important concept known as event topics. But before we do, I would like to spend a few moments talking to the viewers who are already familiar with event subscriptions in vRealize Automation 7. Now, if you're not familiar with that already, just ignore the next few moments of this video. But if you know VRA 7 and you know VRA 7 event subscriptions, you'll recognize the slide that you see here on the screen. Uh, this diagram illustrates how VRA 7 has a master workflow that manages every machine as it, that machine goes through its lifecycle states. You'll recognize that in VRA 7, we had the concept of different states, such as a machine first enters the requested state, then it goes into the building, waiting to build state, then it goes into the mach building machine state. Again, those are different states that are defined in vRise Automation 7. Along with, in vRise Automation 7, there's the concept of the phase and the event message. Now, for those of you who are familiar with all of this in VRA 7, Please be aware that the concepts that you learned in VRA 7 event subscriptions is still applicable in VRI's Automation 8, but the implementation in VRI's Automation 8 is easier and it's uh, not as complicated as what you see here on the screen. Okay, so if you are a VRA 7 person, again, just bear in mind that things are going to be the same but different. All right, let's all once again talk about vRealize Automation 8. So in vRealize Automation 8, you have a very important concept that you need to understand in order to understand vRealize Automation 8 event subscriptions. And that's a concept known as event topics. Let's go into the lab environment and explore these event topics. Let's go take a look at the event topics defined by vRealize Automation. To see the event topics, we're going to go to Extensibility. And then in the Extensibility section, this section here called Events, which you can see displayed over here on the right side of the screen, is not the event topics, but rather this is showing information about events that are triggering. The event topics are defined under Library, Event Topics, and that's where we want to go right now. So into event topics we go, and as you can see, we have 29 different cards. So here they are, 29 different cards for each of the 29 different event topics defined by vRealize Automation 8. Now each of these event topics has a name such as Compute Provision, and additionally there's a dotted version of the name, Compute.Provision.Pre. And I found uh, these event topics made a lot more sense to me once I understood uh, both the name and the dot notation. We'll come back to that in a few moments. But for right now, just focusing on the names themselves, you can see this card here corresponds to an event topic that triggers whenever a machine is provisioned. Alternatively, we have other blueprints that uh, aren't related to machines, but rather these two are event topics that trigger as things are going on with blueprints. So for instance, if you reconfigure a blueprint, that will trigger this first event topic here. Uh, so we've seen blueprint event topics. We've seen machine blueprint, excuse me, machine uh, event topics. If we scroll down further, deployment event topics are related to the deployments. Remember that in VRI's automation, a machine does not exist by itself. Rather, when VRA deploys a machine, it deploys that machine within a deployment. So the deployment is the outer container, the machines are the inner containers, and as you can see, we have event topics for each. If we continue scrolling down, you can see that after all these deployment-related event topics, we have some that are related to disk um, tasks. So for instance, if we 
allocate a new disk to a machine that will show up as an event topic. We have event topics, a, a single event topic related to logging events. If we continue onwards here, we have event topics related to the Kubernetes activities taking place within vRealize automation. We have an event topic for load balancing, an event topic for network configuration, and an event topic for project lifecycle events. So lots of different event topics. But for our purposes right now, what I'd like to do is to focus on uh, just a few of these. For instance, this one called Compute Provision. Now, when I first started working with VRealize Automation 8.0 and I saw these different event topics, I was a little confused when I was looking at their names because, for instance, there's an event topic called Compute Provision and another one that has a very similar name called Compute Post Provision. Now, those made sense to me. I know that Compute here refers to a machine that VRealize Automation is deploying and Provision means when we build it. So when we build a machine, this event topic triggers. But what I wondered is the difference between compute provision and compute post provision. Oh, okay, I get it. So I realized then post uh, in any of these names means this is an event that triggers after some sort of um, task has been performed. So compute post provision is after we're done provisioning a machine, which left me just a tiny bit confused from then on out because I was having a little difficulty remembering that compute provision, if, if we could rename it, uh, perhaps ought to be called compute pre-provision. That way it'd be really clear that this event topic is for when we're about to build the machine, as opposed to this event topic is for when we're done building the machine. Now again, the thing that finally made this clear to me is looking at the dotted notation. So compute.provision.post is after we're done provisioning a machine. On the other hand, compute provision pre is before we start provisioning a machine. So if it helps you, do as I do. Start paying attention to those dotted notations. All right, as you can see, VRA has already defined all these different topics, event topics, and I'm going to pick just one of them to let you see what's going on in these event topics. And we'll pick the one we started with, compute provision, the one that triggers before a machine actually starts getting built. So let's look at compute provision. And as you can see here, for each event topic, there will be a topic ID. That's just the dot notation that I showed you before. There'll be a description of what the event topic is about. The publisher tells you what part of the realized automation is responsible for generating this event. Uh, so, for instance, provisioning means the part of VRA that builds machines as opposed to Blueprint is the part that's responsible for managing Blueprints. Blockable is something we can explore in more detail later on, but the basic idea behind Blockable is if we have a deployment that has multiple subscriptions and multiple subscriptions all triggering at the same time, um, we might need the orchestrator workflows that get called to be called one at a time. If you Define a subscription as blockable. That means that VRealize Automation, when it sees this, when it sees an event subscription for an event topic that's blocked, then that means that the orchestrator workflow that gets run has to run to completion before VRA is going to go on to the next one. On the other hand, if we create a subscription and say that it's not blockable, then that means VRA will kick off whatever orchestrator workflow we specify, and it won't wait for the orchestrator workflow to complete. It'll just go on to the next. Then the main thing I wanted to bring you in here to see is this thing called the schema. We interrupt this video for a brief message. I create videos like this one to teach you about VMware products and technologies such as VRA, VROPS, and VRO. I love creating these videos and sharing with you and people all, all around the world information about these VMware products, but there's tons more information than I can share just in these videos alone. So see the YouTube description down below where you can find a link where you can find more information about how to join me in the classroom. We're returning to our previously scheduled programming. Each of these different items here 
is a piece of information that's loaded into the payload that's sent from VRA into your orchestrator workflow. So when orchestrator um, sees this type of event, a compute pre-provision activity going on, it's going to pass in various information to the orchestrator workflow through the payload, including information such as what's the ID of the blueprint that's involved in what's what's happening right now. Uh, the little icon here, um, S stands for string. You'll find uh, that there are other types of data like numbers and properties and so forth, but S stands for string. And if ever you see this little uh, sort of box shaped gray icon, that means instead of being a single string, like we see up here, this would be an array of strings. So again, the schema defines exactly what information VRA is going to pass to your orchestrator workflow in the payload that VRA sends to the workflow. So there you have it. Again, that's our uh, quick little glimpse into the 29 different event topics. I would recommend that you actually take a few moments and explore the schema for the other event topics. Join me in the next video and I'll show you the VRO workflow we're going to kick off from a VRA subscription.